this video it's going to be a bit of a strange one because I only partially shot it. Now if you can think back to 2019 when I did the engine replacement upon this van it rained for four of the five days I was doing that engine replacement. Now one of the things I did film or was going to film was the cam belt replacement. I was going to do another cam belt vlog with some additional important information however like I've alluded to I only partially shot it due to the weather and me not feeling too great at the time so this video may work it may not if it doesn't I'm sorry First thing first, I want to be removing the serpentine belt. Ugh, that's bloody tough. Ugh. There you go. Is that removed? I've already removed the cooling fan. I snapped a couple of bolts in there. That's one of the things. So the next stage, so I can gain access to the cover, I'm going to have to remove the cooling fan bracket, mounting bracket. So that's the cooling fan, molting bracket removed. I want to remove that pulley there because there's a bolt behind that pulley and the bottom crankshaft pulley. So, four bolts the smaller bolts with the 11 mil head on them, they need to be removed from the inner part of the crankshaft pulley. And if I've learnt my lesson, I should have put some copper slip on the bottom of this pulley, which I have. There you go come off far more easier this time. So that's fully removed. I've also removed the air conditioner compressor and the mounting point. Now next stage is to take this cover off. There's nine bolts around this cover. Once you remove the nine bolts you'll be able to see the timing belt. So that's the nine bolts undone and the timing belt cover should come off like it has. And there you go. The timing belt. What I'll do is just time all this up. I'll show you the timing marks. At least you know when you come Fit one of these belts, you know where the timing marks are. So I can time this engine up. I have purchased a timing tool pin set here. However, it turned up a week late, and obviously the job's already been done because it's now 2021. In this kit, you probably end up only using two of these timing tool pins: one for the crankshaft and one for the camshaft pulley. However, on the engine there are two more timing pin holes and you probably end up using them too if you're going to do the timing chain on the back end of the engine it'd be them two tools you want to be using to time up the camshafts so as i alluded to there are two more timing pin positions upon this engine now i can't really show you because they're right at the back of the engine now at the back on top of the cam cover there are two blanket plugs so you can remove and slide them pins to lock the camshafts into position. That's probably going to be more if you're going to be doing the timing chain at the back of this engine. One camshaft is driven off a timing chain onto the other camshaft and to do that timing chain at the back which is I can just see the cover just there. If I was going to do it I'd probably drop the gearbox, remove the gearbox and drop the engine. And from memory I could see that cover at the back once I removed the gearbox. So if I was going to do the job I'd probably leave the engine within the engine bay. So on the camshaft pulley you can place a timing pin tool inside that hole there which goes through on the other side onto the rocker cover housing. There's also a timing mark up top there where you probably can't see it. I'm just trying to find it now. There you go. You can faint white markings there. You should have two of those on the new belts and they should match up between the teeth of that one and the teeth on the crankshaft pulley. 
So both white line markings on the cam belt want to be lining up with them too. Now I removed on the fuel pump the nut because you're going to have to draw that pulley off. And at the bottom another timing pin you can place into the crank itself. It's just behind that nut there, I'm just spinning off. So I'll just put the nuts. So I'll just put timing pin tools in each one of those. Then I can remove the cam belt. Doesn't really matter so much on this old engine because it's goosed. On the top, I've got a 5.5mm drill bit blocking that camshaft pulley into place. And at the bottom, I have a 10mm drill bit blocking the crank shaft off. So that's not going to go anywhere. So to release the tension on the cam belt, this is the tensioning pulley. Slacking that bolt off there, it should release itself, and that's it. That's that belt loose. Let's put it off. There you go. Comes off with ease. Just see that white line there. That's one time in mark. Uh, it's not very visible, but that's the other one. And then two timing marks on the belt want to be lining up with that mark on the camshaft pulley you just see a faint white line and that faint white line on the crankshaft pulley so that's what them two marks on the belt want to be lining up with so I want to be removing the tension pulley and there's a Nardilla pulley there they're brand new so I'm going to be reusing, reusing them so the next stage is that pulley there and these pulling off So I've just placed some 8 milli bolts in that pulley, and it's just a case of turning those to pull the fuel pump pulley off. And to be fair, it's not that tight. Let's try it off a bit more. There you go, that's it loose. And it's sort of like on a cone fitting. So there's no wood rough key in there, it just slides on there because it doesn't need to be timed up any way, or shape, or form because it's all electronic timing. So the water pump housing, it is just a big housing because the water pump is just here and that's the drive pulley for it. Now there are nine of these 13 milli headed bolts that hold this water pump into position now on the left hand corner there is one 10 milli head bolt remove all the bolts and that should just fall off should just pull off quite easy there you go so it's a big housing or small pump and that's just the impeller impeller part for the water pump there's no ring on there Actually, shall replace that with a new one. But that's all there is. Timing belt, water pump, and pulleys all now being removed. So I've pretty much pillaged everything off this engine, the old engine. I've removed the turbo, the water pump, the new cam belts, new pulleys. Uh, Get some extra parts as well, just in case I need some spare parts. The clutch, not brilliant, but I'll see what the clutch is like on the new engine. Them fuel injector injectors, they're 2013, so I'm going to replace them on that engine unless they have newer ones. Uh, sensors, oil pressure switch, uh, the oil level switch, crankshaft uh, positioning sensor, camshaft positioning sensor, and so on and so forth. I've got them off. Uh, new turbo, I've removed. Steering pump. What else have we got? Oh, the fuel pump, but that is 2004, so I probably probably never end up using that. But at least I've got some spare parts left over there. Next step is to remove the new engine, place it on top of the workbench, and swap things over. And so there you have it. End of a partially shot cam belt video. 
However, after 5,000 trouble free miles, almost, it's almost given me 5,000 miles trouble free. Barring I did break down on the side of the mountain when I was meeting up with Ash from Rossing Europe. That was the fuel pressure sensor on the fuel rail. I must have knocked it when I put the engine back into the van. Another time it made its way loose. And also, I've also had to replace the crankshaft positioning sensor. When I first started up, it was okay, but as soon as it got warm, it was coming up with the injector light up on the dashboard. I traced it back to the crankshaft positioning sensor, replaced it for a new one, and ever since then, I've had no problems with the engine at all. So thanks for watching, I shall see you next time.